Hello, my dear students. In the last class, we had seen uh, uh, last class means in the last session we had seen about uh, the poem Second Coming, written by W. B. Yeats. The background is particularly historical background to the poem Second Coming. Uh, in this session, let us see in detail about uh, the poem and something about. Uh, the poet W.B. Yeats and uh, critical analysis and uh, major themes of the poem. Uh, my dear students, if you understand properly, you have to read the poem once or twice, if possible, thrice. At the same time, you take down the uh, important uh, difficult words and uh, you go through the meaning then uh, you began to understand the poem. So now uh, let us go uh, through the slides of this session to understand for better uh, understanding of the poem. Uh, students, you know well, W.B. Yeats is a great English poet and uh, he is an Irish poet and one of the foremost uh, figures of the 20th century English literature or 20th century literature, world literature. He was the first person or first Irish poet to get a Nobel Prize for literature in 1923. He was fascinated by the Irish legends and occult. So he served as an Irish senator also for two terms. He has written so many poems. Among them, his remarkable works are The Rose, The Wind Among the Reeds, In the Woods, The Tower, The A Vision, Michael Robert, and The Dancer. His poetry is characterized mainly by allusions and symbols. He uses full of symbols and allusions uh, in his poetry. He chose words and uh, assembled them to use allusive imagery and symbolical structures. Uh, my dear students, this poem uh, as already explained in the previous session, uh, it was written in 1919, just after the First World War, but it was published uh, in 1921. So he has explained uh, aftermath of uh, the First World War also. This poem is one of the most famous and frequently quoted poems in all Western literature. It is one of the the poem is one of the several popular prose writers have used lines from W.B. Yeats poems as titles to their works and their poems. Uh, that means many poets have, many writers have used his lines, his quotes as their titles to their works. For example, Chinua Akube, uh, the famous African uh, writer, has taken the lines of this second coming poem for his famous novel things fall apart so we are going to see in the poem those words things fall apart in this way uh, he is uh, a great poet and uh, this poem is one of his best uh, poems My dear students, uh, the poem has uh, made two stanzas. Uh, the first stanza is uh, of course smaller one compared to the second uh, stanza. The first stanza describes the, a world of chaos, confusion and pain. The second stanza, which is a longer stanza compared to the first stanza, it imagines the speakers receiving a vision of the future. What would be the future? 
that vision of the poet is explained in the second uh, uh, stand see uh, the poem begins like this turning and turning in the widening gyre the falcon cannot hear the falconer things fall apart the center cannot hold mere anarchy is uh, loosed upon the world these are the beginning lines of the poem as i told you uh, the th in the third line we see the words things fall apart these words are used by chinu akube for his uh, novel title so uh, the poem explains like this flying around and around in a widening spiral so a falcon can no longer hear the call of its owner that means the uh, a falcon cannot hear the falconer so what happens because of these things are breaking down that is uh, things fall apart and their foundation is giving away pure destruction and lawlessness have spread across the world and so has a tidal way darkened by the blood so he says mere anarchy is loosed upon the world the blood dimmed tide is loosed so he uses like this all the rituals of innocence have been swallowed by this tide the best people are not motivated to act but the worst people are impassioned and eager so it is the time only for the worst people not for the best people that is the idea of uh, this wb eats so in this way he begins with the image of falcon flying out of uh, ear shot from its human master Uh, in this image the falcon has got itself lost by flying too far away which we can read as a reference to the collapse of traditional social and other arrangements in europe at that time it was writing so uh, here uh, what we see the falcon falcon it is a symbol of body it may be the symbol of desire and it may be the symbol of uh, will power so the falcon is no longer uh, in a position to listen to intellect that is the falconer so what i told uh, the falconer falcon is not hearing the falconer falcon is the symbol of body falconer is the symbol of soul soul is not listening the body as a result what happened things are falling apart and disrupting the disintegration is a kind of complete anarchy bringing along with it a lot of bloodshed the ceremony of innocence is the main victim of all this anarchy so in this way the poet is going to talk about uh, the anarchy bloodshed and uh, the chaos and such other things so some kind of revelation has to happen soon and the second coming itself must be close it seems to be having a vision of vast image emerging out of the racial unconsciousness of mankind he sees that shape is with a lion body and the head of a man this shape has a gaze which is blank and pitiless as the gaze of the sun so he says uh, the speaker exclaims with the second coming according to the bible second coming is the return or rebirth of jesus christ at the end of the world or on the judgment day but as the speaker says this a vision comes to the speaker from the world collective unconscious 
the speaker sees a barren desert land where a creature with a man's head and a lion's body is coming to life in uh, its expression is like the sun empty and without pity its uh, legs are moving uh, slowly and all around it fly the shadows of uh, disturbed desert uh, desert birds so after that everything becomes dark but the speaker knows something new 2000 years of calm have been irreversibly disrupted by the shaking of the cradle so the poet at last asks asks the darkness drops again now i know that 20 centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle so at last what he asks what rough beast what rough beast it's our come round at last and uh, he seems to tell towards uh, the path towards bethlehem to be born bethlehem is the birthplace of uh, that uh, jesus christ so the poet is going to talk about in the time or at this time this is the time of chaos and anarchy the world is full of uh, such things to save the world definitely the poet hopes jesus will coming back for the second time this is the second coming my dear students in this way the poem acknowledges that world is on the threshold of uh, major revolution midway throw with the lines surely some revolution is at hand surely the second coming is at hand these are the lines what the poet takes however in this second coming a aids imagines our hopes not jesus christ but some mythical sphinx creature that moves this time it comes not as uh, sorry the christ comes not as uh, jesus christ but in the form of a mythical sphinx creature that moves its legs or thighs slowly that uh, fulfill the prophecy from the bible so in this way the poem concludes with the poet asking a rhetorical question wondering what will be born out of all this this poem has no doubt full of exotic and unusual imageries uh, first are uh, first line or later lines are also having such uh, so many symbols and imageries uh, and there are so many meanings like gair and such other things and uh, there are uh, so many imageries like the bird which represents a cycle of civilization uh, reference of falcon uh, how in the present world are changing because of so many things the changing of climate global warming or even uh, these consequences may be seen the seen in the form of tsunami or at present corona these are all the imageries used by this aids indirectly so the second coming relies heavily on certain words being repeated but it emphasizes the cyclic nature of things so uh, what uh, we say that uh, there are many clear biblical echoes are also here uh, and these are the important meanings for the difficult words and uh, uh, the poem is uh, explained mainly on these major themes uh, my dear students 
you read the poem once again i am asking you read the poem and go through the slides you definitely understand properly if you listen this video and if you go through the slides i hope uh, it is enough if uh, uh, you want to understand properly so these are the major themes these major themes also may be discussed among your jewels thank you thank you very much